There's no let up on the climate change front. The Bureau of Meteorology and the CSIRO have released their State of the Climate report and it shows at least five major trends that you should be concerned about. First up, if you look at what's happened on temperatures, Australia has warmed about one degree since 1910, as indeed the planet as a whole has. The key reason is that we are adding greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. If we didn't have any greenhouse gases, in fact the average temperature of the planet would be about minus 18 degrees and we'd be freezing. As it is, it's about plus 15 degrees on average. But if we keep adding greenhouse gases, as indeed we have since pre-industrial times, we're talking about 44% more CO2 alone. If we keep adding those gases, the temperatures will increase and that chart will show Australia, indeed the rest of the planet, getting warmer. We're also seeing a shift in the odds towards extreme heat conditions. So scientists are calling this a five-fold factor. So from 1951 to 1980, for example, we would have seen extremely warm months occurring about 2% of the time. Now, in the last 15 years, that's increased fivefold to more than 10%. Likewise, in the overnight temperatures, back in that earlier period, we would have expected, again, about a 2% period with overnight temperatures in the very warm kind of stage. But in the last 15 years, we've seen that rise almost to that 10% as well. Again, a five-fold increase. Now, it doesn't mean that we never get cold temperatures, but the chances of a cold month have reduced over this period by about one third. So if cold is less likely, we're seeing that heat waves are increasing in frequency, they're lasting longer, and they're more intense. As this chart shows, the numbers of extreme heat events are increasing. If you take 2013 alone, there are 28 such days recorded. To give you some comparison, it took 1910 to 1941, that's 31 years of the Bureau's existence, to count 28 such days. So in one year, we've counted all of those. And so there's a clear trend towards those extreme daily heat events. And with those, we're also seeing rises in other issues, such as extreme fire weather, and those days are also increasing, particularly for southeastern Australia, where a large part of the population lives. Another clear signal in the climate is showing up with rainfall. If you look at this chart, you'll see that southwest WA and southeastern Australia are drying out. And that's particularly true during the cooler months of the year, which are important for farmers who that's when they put their crops in. Now, surface temperatures tend to dominate the news. It's where we live, it's where we've got our thermometers. So 2014, 15, 16 are gonna be the hottest three years on record. But in fact, the most clear signal for climate change is being registered in the oceans, which are not subject to the kind of fluctuations we see at the surface between El Nino and La Niñas, for example. And so since the 1960s, we've seen a steady uptake of heat in the oceans, particularly deep in the oceans. The questions for us will be, what happens to the oceans if they continue to warm at the rate they are? How's that going to affect our weather? How's that going to affect sea level since warmer oceans expand? And also for the marine creatures trying to make a go of it, how are they going to adjust to warmer conditions? And there's also, frankly, the question of what if the oceans stop taking up heat at that rate, leaving more of it in the atmosphere? We're going to feel it then at the surface of the planet. And so with these charts showing the increase of ocean heat, the shifting rainfall patterns, the rise of extreme heat events, the shift towards warmer conditions, and those creeping temperature rises, we're seeing the emergence of more precise and robust science supporting global warming. In a country like Australia, which has its natural variations of droughts and flooding rains, we are imposing climate change on top of that with uncertain outcomes. And the question is going to remain to us is, what are we going to do about it?